cows again. Chances are your sink is not this organized. And about 45 minutes ago, mine wasn't this organized. But I'm gonna show you a quick way to bring a little bit of order to the crazy random sinkhole that can be under your sink. I used a one by eight by six foot piece of board I had lying around. If you don't have a board lying around, you can get a one by six by eight foot from a big box store for about seven bucks. I say one by six because if you get the one by eight, they're gonna get into the 10, 12, 14 dollar range. And since there's not a big difference between six inches or eight inches, I'm gonna let you save some money and just get a one by six. Take a tape measure, measure the length of your board. Now my board I had was about eight feet long, which is a common size that you get from a big box store. I don't know what leg 16 inches long from the bottom of the cabinet to the other side of the shelf I was creating. Now you may want yours longer or shorter, it depends on what you want to store under there. For me, storing paper towels on top of it, 16 inches was perfect. Now I made the width of it about two feet long. I think mine might have been 22 inches. Measure your space, figure out what you want because there's no right or wrong dimension. If you make it a little shorter or taller, it doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see this. It's purely functional. So measure it out, you know, if you want 16 inch legs. Mark out your 16, mark out another 16 for the other side, and then mark out the length of your shelf. Now use a speed square just to get right angles. This doesn't matter, even if it's a little wobbly, you're not going to notice. But I like to always observe best practice. So use a speed square, mark that straight line so you know exactly where to cut. Mark it at your other leg. And using this, you'll cut at least a halfway decent line, even if your saw wavers. Because you can use a jigsaw or a circular saw to cut this. Now if you see this pencil and you're wondering what kind of pencil is that, it's not exactly a mechanical pencil, this is a lead pointer. You just you slide the lead right in the end, it's a lot like a mechanical pencil, but this uses a little bit of thicker lead and you use different size leads. It's very nice because you don't ever have to sharpen it, and it's a little sturdier than a mechanical pencil, because a mechanical pencil has lead that's pretty thin. This is a little bit thicker so it doesn't break quite as easy. I've dropped this and sometimes the lead doesn't break, you know, half the time it does, but it's a little thicker so you don't have as much of an issue. I use a lead pointer all the time because it's very convenient. I'm going to use a circular saw to cut the board because it's just a little bit quicker than a jigsaw and it's going to give you a straighter line. Make sure you're not going to be cutting on top of your table. Now, if you may want to clamp this to your table or you may want to weight it down. Make sure there's nothing underneath it because you don't want to saw through anything you don't want to saw through. I like to wear safety equipment. Full face shield is crucial when you're using a circular saw because chips and different things can fly right at you and I don't want anything going to my eyes. I wear earmuffs because you know what? I don't want to be deaf when I grow up. I want to keep my hearing and this loud equipment over time can mess with your hearing. I also wear a respirator because I don't want to breathe anything other than air. With all that sawdust going up, especially if you have something like MDF you're sawing through, that stuff is not good to breathe in. So I recommend Wear a respirator, wear earmuffs, wear a face shield, protect your eyes and face and anything. Because you know what, I've, there's been times when I don't wear a face shield and I've gotten little chips of wood in my eye and that is not fun. So if you're going to do a job, always be safe about it. You can see my board is slipping a little bit as I was cutting it because I'm working on a metal shop cart. You want to work on a surface that is not going to slip like metal. This is probably the worst surface to work on. That is not a good example. But work on wood or work on some kind of workbench or put something down where your board is not going to slip or even clamp it down. So you saw my first cut, two more cuts like that, and you got all you got the three pieces you need to build this shelf. Now I'm going to screw the top of this side into a three quarter inch board. So I know I want to mark my center line, which is three eighths, and then just run a quick line. I mean, you can always make it up, just so you know about where your screws need to go. It doesn't matter if they're even. It doesn't matter where you put them, as long as they're in there. Two is going to be fine. Now you want to pre-drill these holes, and I'm using a 3 30 seconds drill bit because you want the hole to be snug into these screws so that these threads of the screw pull it tight. So 3 30 seconds is great. These are one and a quarter inch bugle head screws. So you mark that center line, you just want to go right through there. And it is ready to screw these pieces together. Now you may want to go ahead and drill through the other piece as well. 
Now you can use some corner clamps or you can just hold it together and eyeball it. Maybe I'll turn this board up on its end and then just butt the other piece against the wall or something heavy and just drill through it just like that. It's best to pre-drill. That way you're not going to split your wood, especially if you're working with plywood. That is more likely to split going through the plies. Now if you're working with solid wood and you have some of that left over, that's less likely to split. But it's always good to just pre-drill your holes. And then you can just screw these things right into one or the other. I'm ready to screw the side of the shelf into the top of the shelf. Now with this configuration, the screw is what is basically holding this top shelf up. If you want a little stronger bond, you would put the shelf on top of the side and screw down into it. That way, this board is what's holding the shelf up. Again, it's in a lot of weight, so it doesn't really matter. You just take your cordless drill, screw that thing right in. Screw it in tight. Your shelf is set. You do two screws on each side, so you're all set. You've already cut the boards. You've got your shelf together. Now you can see this example, this is not painted. You don't have to paint it, you can paint it. Being under sink, just in case there's any moisture or water, it's nice to paint it so the wood will up, hold up a little bit better. So that is your shelf. You're all done. You can bring a little bit of order to under your sink. This project cost me nothing because I had all the materials on hand. And even if you don't have any materials, a box of screws or nails is gonna be up five or six bucks. A one by six by eight foot board is gonna be six, seven, eight bucks. So that is 15 bucks for the entire project, and chances are you may have some of this stuff on hand. In 20 minutes from start to finish, I brought a little bit of order. It is no longer a wasteland of junk 